start recording. Um, other than that, so um, it's not too much. I mean, it, it's it's there's stuff, but you know, it's not overwhelming. I don't think. And I looked just looked at your scores. You're doing okay. You have like a 19 out of 25 so far. So for I mean, 19 in points. And I don't I don't know how many you have left. I, I haven't I didn't look at any of that stuff. I just I just looking just in general to see. Yeah. So. I mean what's been helping is that the, the um the recordings. So yep. if I'm stuck or even with the homework, I just go back and pause and, and it that's, and, and that's why I do it. You know, like I, I think it's important, you know, that that's why I do it, teach it this way, because like, you know, for kids, who, people who are working, it's for them. They can go back and see it. People who yeah. are here can see it live and then go back and use it. You know, I, I want to make sure, um, you know, I cover the material and show you how to do the stuff because, you know, the math isn't hard. It's just that you haven't used these buttons on a calculator and no one's right, ever going to teach right. you. <laughs> yeah, I agree. You know, so that that's that's the big thing is that you know the the um the calculator is new. You know that that stuff that you have to deal with. Let me just put it back on. All right, so it's six o'clock. So I'm gonna just jump in, and I'm assuming Sally will will be here. Um, he's usually a few minutes late, but. Um, and maybe well, um, so chapter, I saw you, you had a couple questions on chapters, uh, eight and nine, but you figured out one of the ones that you, yeah, you forget, you, you kept forget, forget to type in the zero, even though you were like, oh, here's the yeah. numbers. You weren't typing yeah. the zero. In. <laughs> um, and the other one, when you were asking how you got those values, you're just doing an interval. So, um. I'll, let me go back to that question. I don't know exactly which one it was. Yeah, I don't even remember what. I know it was in chapter nine. Um, I'll just grab one. And, and so they were asking for this, and you're like, well, how do I get these pieces? You're just doing the, the confidence interval. So if it was a T test, you're doing a, the T interval. If you did a uh, normal, if you did the Z test, then you do the Z interval. If this was a proportion, you did the one proportion interval. So, and that's what would give you these values. So, all the stuff that you and you have the the numbers that you're putting in, it yeah. Was, you know. Um, here, I have my mean. I have my standard deviation. Um, I have all my stuff. You're just using those numbers that you've already put together for the, to do to do the Z test in this case, to then just do the Z interval. So once you, and they'll keep that stuff in there. So um, if I did this here and it was, here, let me just go uh, stats, Z test. I have statistics um, here. The mean is 19. The standard deviation is 2.1. The Sample mean is 18.1. Sample size is 45. And I'm testing less than. So once I do this, if I go and do the Z interval to test it, oops. It's kept all my information. Yes. So I don't have to do anything. I just have to make sure I have the right you know, confidence level at that point. And they want 95, so that's fine. So I don't have to even go in and change anything. I just you know tell it, and it will give me my answers. So it will give me my my two um, uh, um, whatever they were called uh, upper and lower bounds. So um, like so that's all you have to do once you do the test you can just go to do the Z interval and the information is still there already for you. So it's not even like you have to think, oh, what am I supposed to do? You just go to the right test, you go right at the right yeah, interval yeah. and it, the, it just keeps the information that you just put in there. So, um, and then you just tell it, give me the interval and it will give you those two pieces for you. Okay? Yes, thank you. No problem. 
All right. So, and the good thing is that that's again practice for chapter nine. So, um, in chapter 10, what we're doing is we're doing two sample tests. So, instead of one sample test, which were one and two and um, five, we're doing three and four and six. So, um, that's really the big difference. And so, on the test that you're going to take, the next test uh, is nine, 10, and 12, I think. Um, so that's the big difference between nine and 10 is nine was one sample, 10 is two samples. So you're gonna see that they're gonna have to tell you about the fact that there are two different groups and they're looking to find, is there a difference or is one higher than the other one um, or is one lower than the other one, those kinds of things. And that, that's what they're testing. And they have all this you know, fancy, we still have the, the Z-score. Um, Actually, let me deal with this first. We're going to have our null is that the first mean is equal to the second mean, or um, if I subtract the two of them, I'm going to get zero. And so those are the, the and same thing for proportions, that the proportions are equal, or if I subtract them, I get zero. And so when I do the, um, the thing where she asks, what is the distribution, um, in the first part, it's always going to be zero, because that's what I'm testing. I'm assuming that these two means are subtracted off, and I'm going to get zero. And then I have to deal with whatever the standard error of the mean is over here. Um, and it's ugly for it's it's really ugly for proportions, um, uh, and but luckily you have only to think you have to do one of them, um, and the, the the sample mean is also not um, for sanity deviations is is also um, a big ugly mess because you have to put the pieces together the two standard deviations, um, but it's not all I mean it's not impossible it's just that they're ugly to look at. Um, but that's the big thing is that these two things are either going to be, they're either going to have them being the same or that you're subtracting them and they're going to be zero. Because obviously if they're the same, you subtract them, they get to be zero. And that's why when we do the test, we just have the um, x bar one minus, oops, x bar two because we're assuming these means are the same and if we subtract off these means they cancel out so we're dealing with that in our um as our as the top part and then we have our in the bottom we're going to have this big weird thing where we have the standard deviation squared Both standard deviations, we have to square them because we're putting them back under the mean, and this is over ends because we had to combine them. In, in the uh, regular version, we had just uh, the standard deviation over the square root of n, but because these are fractions and we're trying to add them together, we have to make it so that we can put these pieces together and um, do that. We put everything under the square root sign. Um, we didn't have to, I guess. Um, it would have worked if we had uh, left it like this, you know, plus the second one, but it just is cleaner that way. So when you see this, it's not scary. It's just that this one never existed before. Uh, it was a number, and now it's a, a, a value. It's another formula. So that's how that ends up happening, but it does freak people out. Okay, so um, what hello. we have to do, hello, I tell you, I, I figured you were. We just really just started. I'm just, I was yeah. just kind of going over the idea of what chapter ten is about. Um, okay. So you really haven't missed too much. Like. Okay. Four minutes of me talking. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. 
and, and I was helping uh, uh, Michelle with a question from the previous homework. So, you know, if you're like, oh, gee, I'm really going to see that, you, you really missed very little. Um, so don't worry about it. I'll probably yeah. bring it up again anyway, because I'm going to yes. show you how to. Even me, like, I have a, a question from the previous homework. Yeah, sure. I'll do those before I get started. What's okay. what's up? Okay. Which one? I think it's question seven. It okay. is seven or six, one of them. Yeah. Well, they're kind of the same. So um, they're both proportions. So in chapter, in problem six, they're doing, yes. they're just asking you. The we, are, we have something like 410 and 320, something like that. Um, four hundred and ten and three twenty. Um, I don't know. I know neither one of those is bigger, but I'll I'll look at chapter at problem six, I guess. Um, so what they have here in six is that they're looking to see. Um, do uh, teenage girls smoke to lose weight? I think is what the uh, yeah the, the questions are bizarre um, in Massachusetts I, again <laughs> um, and they want to know well, what you know should we reject or not reject an all hypothesis? So we have to kind of come in and, and put all the little pieces in. Um, so here we have 273 where it was the is the n we have 63 is our people who said that they did that and um we want to know is that more than um the original group which was <clears throat> ah, you know more than 30 percent so they want to, is it bigger than, is that bigger than 30%? So stat, we go to tests. This is a single proportion. So we're going to go to number five. And we're testing that the proportion is 30%. Where we have 63 successes and 273 uh, trials. And we want to test more than. So make sure more than is selected, and then you hit calculate, and then you're going to decide. Is this a test it? Yep. This is that stat test uh, five. Okay. And when you go through and you put in all the information, you look and you see, oh, my p-value is 0.99, so I'm not going to reject the null hypothesis. That it's uh, so my my null hypothesis would be that it's less than or equal to 30 uh, percent, because I was looking to see is it more is there more than? And the reason I can see that is well, my number here is um, you know my actual test statistic that I got was 0.23. My my test statistics was negative. 2.5 so 99 percent of the data is on is in that do not reject space so um that's so that's that's why i'm doing that if i had done less than i may have rejected the, the null hypothesis you know because i'm check i'm switching it around so i can have a bunch of different things uh that this could ask and it's going to change what my decision is based upon my null, my alternative hypothesis. Um, this one here is kind of, is pretty much the same. It does all the little pieces, asks, asks you for uh, the, the parts to it. And I, I went over it last week. So if you want to watch the video, um, this is the hardest piece of the whole thing. Remember to calculate this here is just the value that they give us that they're testing. This value here is gotten by uh, 
you take the square root of p times q over n. So uh, p is the probability of success, q is the probability of failure. So you subtract it from p from one to get that part. Multiply those together, divide by how many things were being tested, and then take the square root of that, and that will give you um, the standard error um, that they're looking for here. Um, the rest of it is, you know, just doing the test, making the decisions, and then here you're going back to do a z interval of that test. Um, and this is again going to be a z interval of a proportion. So make sure you're doing one proportion z interval as opposed to z interval. So uh, that's the big uh, thing that, that people tend to get wrong. So, and this stuff here will already be put in once you've done the, the test, because here if I do my z interval, well, proportion z interval, I hit enter, my stuff is already in there. So, which is part of Simmons Precision Product Inc. We have been getting electronically uh, a reminder of a past due balance, but we don't have log on credentials to get into it. Could someone please give me a call so I can obtain a copy of this invoice? Again, my name is Tina Maselli. I work for Raytheon Technologies. I can be reached at. So those are the um, things that we're testing. Three, one, two. And I think Does that help? customer ID is eight three six six three two. Thank you so much. Bye bye. It's okay. Okay, so in uh, these, the biggest thing to make sure that you do is that you realize which one they're putting first. Um, so here they talk about four-year colleges and you know all that information, and then they put four-year colleges on this side. So you've probably written all the information down with four-year colleges first, and then two-year colleges, and then you realize you have it backwards. Um, so because here they're looking to see um, they're looking to see uh, do to your are to your colleges um, they're looking to see are four year colleges higher than two year colleges is the enrollment of a four year college higher than that of a two year college well then they that's the question that they put in. And then what they've done is they put that two-year colleges are on the other side. So um, just be aware that they may switch the pieces around. And um, it's fine when you, if you were doing it, if I was writing this out, I would have four-year colleges here on this side and two-year colleges on this side because that's what they're asking me. And that's how they've given me the information. So. Well, actually, they gave me two-year colleges first and then the four-year colleges. But because this is how they asked it, that's how I would put it down. Um, so I'd be testing four-year colleges is higher. So um, that's what this says right here. Four-year colleges is higher than two-year colleges. But they're technically saying that two-year colleges are less than four-year colleges. That's their null hypothesis. But I would have turned it around and, and done it the other way. So just to be aware that you, you have to put it in the order that they're asking it um, over here. So um, they have a tendency to mess that stuff up and I, I don't know why. So when we're doing this, we know this is means. So we're going to go to stat, two sample tests. So it's either a Z test or a T test, I don't know yet. Um, uh, I have here that my samples are my I have my sample mean and my sample standard deviation and I have my sample mean and sample standard deviation so this is going to be a t-test because I don't know the population standard deviations now um, when we do a t-test they're going to ask you a question down here at the bottom is it pooled and the answer was always no because pooled means that we're deciding that these standard deviations of these two things are the same. And since we don't know that, um, we're going to say no. I mean, if they were told, if we're told that they're the same, uh, then um, it's yes, but then we probably should know the population standard deviations. So we always just assume that it's not the same. Um, that's the, the big thing in this, in t-tests. So, uh, we do our null and alternative hypotheses. 
Um, what does it mean to subtract the two means? It just means that we're subtracting the two means. Seems to make sense. And then here, what is the distribution? Now, because this is a t-test, remember I said before we um, it was n minus 1. Well, notice this is not going to give us that. This is going to give us this bizarre, crazy formula. Um, we'll get the answer when we do this one. So whenever we do two, uh, two sample t-tests, just get the, the, the degrees of freedom from the calculator. Let it do the work. So um, I'm going to put in my information here. So the two-year colleges are going first. So the mean of the, the mean average mean I had from two-year colleges was 5064 with a standard deviation of 4774. And for four-year colleges, oh, and the sample size is 35. And for four-year colleges, it's 5566 with a standard deviation of 8151 and a sample size of 35. Now I'm testing my no, my alternative is less than, so I want to make sure less than is selected. It's not pooled. All right, they're not going to tell you it's pooled, but they're, it's not pooled. And I'm going to calculate. And this here gives me my degrees of freedom. And notice I get this weird decimal. Um, you're almost always going to get a weird decimal when you do two-tailed, uh, two-sample t-tests. That's why uh, you let it do the work for you. So this is a T, and then remember we go to functions, subscript, and then type in the value uh, 54.87, two decimal places. So um, is 870. So um, I'm not rounding, I'm leaving it alone. And then what was the test statistic? It's right here. It was a t test because we did it, and it was negative. 0 0.31, because that's all they ask for, two decimal places. So make sure you're rounding. If you don't want to round, just put the whole thing in there. That's fine. 4400397. Oops. Somehow I put an extra decimal place in there. Don't do that. <laughs> That's better. Um, what is the p-value? The p-value is right here. 0.3772. And then um, what does it mean? Well, it's the probability that um, if the null hypothesis is true. So notice there's only two of them. So, um, and here they're saying that the enrollment of, they're finding the difference between them. And since we know that, you know, the four-year colleges is more than the two-year colleges, we can obviously understand that that's why they chose that one. That, that's the whole big thing. That's how they got those uh, values. Don't worry about what picture, you just upload anything you want. Just upload a picture. I don't know what it does. It does it. It just there was a oh, no file on screen. See no file to because I'm not a student, so um, I don't know. Uh, just upload a file. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're testing it against the 0.05 alpha because I said so. Uh, right here at the 5% level of significance. What are we going to do? We're going to not reject because this year is bigger than this year. So, and then see p-value is greater than alpha. We don't re we re uh, do not reject, and there isn't sufficient evidence. Um, 
why do we use a t distribution because we don't know the population standard deviations yes there's the samples are independent and the population standard deviation is not known that's the bigger part the population standard deviation is not known um we don't necessarily know that they're independent we just assume um because there are two different things you know we, we can guess that but um this year um in this case i believe they told us uh no nope, same thing um and then they ask us for the graph uh it's going to be obviously the one that has less than because that's what we're testing there's only one of them so it's not hard to figure out which one it is just make sure that this picture matches the um, alternative hypothesis keep going through notice they're not asking us to do the uh, to the uh, the uh, intervals we could if I went to stat and tests and to sample t interval all of my stuff is still there and here's my differences so um, because zero is included in this that's why i don't reject so they're testing to see is that what what is the difference between these two things and um, as long as zero is in that range then we don't reject um, if i were to redo this and say this was 25,000 Now notice zero is not included. These are both negative. So the difference is somewhere between uh, 23,000 and 16,000. Um, so zero is not included in that range. So therefore they are different. That, that's the whole big thing that they're, they're testing is, is one uh, is zero in that range. And that's how you would use the T intervals to, to figure that out. Um, they're not asking you to, um, but that's what it would do. Problem three, I'm going to skip problem two because it's the same thing as problem one uh, with different numbers. Problem three um, is a Z test. Okay. And the big difference between two sample Z tests and uh, two sample T tests is that you have to put the standard deviations in first. <laughs> and then you put the means and, and, and um, sample sizes that's it that, that's the big difference is that the standard deviations go first um, other than that everything else is exactly the same uh, to calculate this here um, remember i said the mean here is going to be zero because we're testing that if we subtract them we're going to get zero to calculate this thing You take the standard deviation of the first one and square it and divide by n and then add it to the standard deviation of the second one squared divided by n and then you take the square root so in this case here the standard deviations are six um so we have 21 hybrids Standard deviation of six. And then thirty one non hybrids with a standard deviation of four. And then I get my handy dandy calculator. So 
So six squared, move the error over, divided by three, oh, divided by 21, plus four squared, move the error over, divided by 31. I get this, and now I'm gonna take the square root of that. So second square root, second answer. And I get this 1.49 something. Did I put the numbers in backwards? Wouldn't be surprised. I would have been right. Oh, that's why. Because I wasn't paying attention, I took the sample sizes. The populations here are six and three. Helps to put the, read the whole problem. So I just I put the sample one as opposed to the population one. So make sure that you you read the whole thing and get the population ones. So because I knew there were population ones, I just didn't uh, look at them. Um, so that's the the big thing is that you make sure you're using the population standard deviations, which are six and three. Okay. Other than that, everything else is going to be and then you just do the tests to sample t, a z test because it's going to be that um, but that's how you calculate this everything else you just put in make sure you put the standard deviations in first and then everything else afterwards you're going to get a p-value um, uh, remember if there's more if it's e to the negative if you see a, like a eight you know point something at the very end, there's going to be an e to the negative value. Just make sure you move the decimal point that many places. That's going to tell you where uh, it is. And obviously, there's going to be lots of zeros. So um, make sure you just use four of them. And then because we're testing greater than, that's why it's this. And then what are we going to do? Uh, this one here. Um, when we have things that are not independent, these here are dependent because they're paired tests. So um, they're paired because one group is looking at the other group. So in this case, we have wives and husbands. Uh, you're going to see another one further down uh, where we do jump rope and or uh, push-ups or something, um, and or cholesterol, where we have where we started and then where we end at the um, end of all the stuff, we need to subtract these. So we do these those two things because they're paired as a single t-test. So even though there are two uh, sets of values and we're testing to see if the difference is zero, because they're paired, it's a different test, all right? What we do is we actually subtract each group off and then um, use that numbers and just do a single t-test. So we're actually going to just do a single t-test of this with this as data. And then you just have to make sure you know which one you're subtracting. So um, here it says we're testing um, is, the, is the mean difference in the husband's versus the wife's negative. Okay, so they're going to subtract the wife's score from the husband's score and look to see if we get a negative value. Okay, because uh, these are how happy people are. Where one is you're very happy and five is you're not happy. So they're subtracting um, the wives score from the husband scores and looking to see is that going to be negative is it going to be zero less than zero so we go in and we go to edit 
clear this out. Go all the way up, hit clear, hit enter, clear it out, and then type in our information. Three, enter, four, enter, two, enter, three, enter. Three, four, two, three, four, two, one, one, two, four. And then we do the men's two, three, one, three, two, one, 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 two, four. Okay, so now that we have those, we want to subtract them. And remember, we want to subtract the list, we want to subtract the wives from the husbands. So we really have list two minus list one. We could have done this uh, here and subtracted them all by ourselves, but um, which isn't a big deal because there was like 10 of them. But if there were hundreds of them, we wouldn't want to do that. We want to let the computer do it. But just make sure you know which one you're supposed to be doing. So it's the husbands so it, this is going to go up it's going to be list two minus list one let me put them in and usually that happens we usually we have our beginning score and our ending score so the beginning score usually goes first our ending score goes second um, like we have here in our uh, cholesterol so this is our beginning our starting and our ending so it makes sense to have starting first and then ending. And then we're going to subtract, um, our, in this case, we'll subtract our ending from our uh, starting to see if it's gone down or gone up, depending upon what we're testing. Um, maybe it was, you know, number of push ups. Um, okay. So now I have my data in list three. I'm going to go to stat, test, and this is a t-test. And I'm going to have data, but my data is not, and my test here is zero. I'm looking to test that this is zero. I'm looking to see if it's negative. But my list is in list three. So make sure you choose the right list. I have a frequency of one. My alternative is that it's negative, so less than zero, and calculate. And that's going to give me my information. Now, in this case here, our, t our degrees of freedom is n minus 1 because um, we only have one column of data now. Because they're dependent, we're not doing the two tests, we're not doing the two samples, so we have a single thing, so we can just subtract one to get our degrees of freedom. Um, excuse me. Make sure you put negatives in if it's negative. We have our p value, and this gives us our information. And then what it means, which one are we doing? Well, we had p value is negative, is less than, so that's why it's this. We're going to reject because. Uh, this number is smaller than 0 0.05, and all the rest of the stuff remains the same. And again, they could have done a T uh, distribution on this just to see um, if zero is in that range, but they didn't. Um, I think the la this is the last one I'm going to do here is number, yep. Yeah. Six. Uh, it's five and six. Okay. Okay. So, in to do five, for some reason I thought that said six, but it says five. Um, uh, which is kind of a funny thing. Um, her husband, well, with her husband, spent two and a half hours picking out speakers. A statistician decided to ask people if men 
actually enjoys shopping for electronics more than women do. And so uh, she goes and asks questions and she gets Um, 24 men out of 66. And she finds eight out of 25 women. And now, uh, she wants to do her, her, her hypothesis test. Well, in the calculator, it's real simple, but this is the part that is difficult. So um, what we have to do, we have to begin, this is going to be zero because we're testing that the mean is of one, subtracting the other one is going to be zero. Okay. Um, that's, so that's, that's the easy part. This, however, is very hard. Excuse me. And so to calculate it, So we have this P of C times Q of C over 1 over N plus N, the first N plus 1 over the, sec, uh, in the second N. So to calculate P, C, right, we have to find, it's really the combined successes. over the combined trials. So this here is our combined successes. We use that in this group over here. So to do that, we just add the two pieces together. So I have twenty-four. 24 plus 8. I get 32 over, and then 66 plus 25, 91. So that's this one. The Q, remember, is everything that's left. So if 32 people were said yes, then the rest of them said no. I can just subtract off. I get 91 minus 32. I get 59. Now, notice I'm not turning this into decimals because this multiplication is going to be easier to do as fractions than it is to be uh, as decimals. Uh, so, because I don't have to deal with any rounding. There. So that's my thing I'm going to find to get this uh, piece here, the, this uh, standard deviation of the um, sample. So. Clear? I have 32 divided by 91 times 59 divided by 91 
times. And then in parentheses, 1 over 66 plus 1 over 25. Close parentheses, which you don't need to do. But uh, so I've just put in all the little pieces. I put this in as a fraction, like because fractions are just division. So I just did those things. And then this stuff, and I hit enter, and I get that. And now I need to take the square root of it because I'm not quite done. So second square root, second answer. And that's how you get this number here. So yours is going to be this pretty much is the same thing. I would just put it in as fractions into your calculator. It's just easier. So find your combined probabilities. OK, that's this one. And then just subtract whatever this is from the denominator. Or subtract the numerator from the denominator. That's going to be your leftover. OK, then put those fractions in uh, just like that. And you just use the parentheses to make sure that this happens uh, before this addition happens before the multiplication. And then take that value and then take the square root of it. And that's how you're going to get that piece that we're not going to use ever again. It doesn't get used in the calculations. Hello, Professor. Yes. Sometimes when you teach, it feels like we understand everything. We don't have question. <laughs> but when we try to attempt, oh, wow. So yes. I, I don't think I have to ask this anymore. Well, well, because you, know? you, you like, you're like, it can't be this easy. You've been all, you've been told all your life statistics is hard. Yeah. And then I show you it's not. And like it, it, then you go to do it. And you're like, but it's supposed to be hard. And you're like, it, it's not hard. And something's wrong. And that's kind of the the funny thing is that people just like they freak out, especially like on some of these. They give you these trick questions, and then you're like, why was that so easy? Um, it's not that statistics is hard. It's just long. Yeah, like it's it's, it's it tricky. By hand, you know, it's to do tricky. it by hand, it takes forever. So yeah. you, you use technology, and the technology makes it really quick. Yeah, and so, could could you believe that even the C, that T is um, subscript T. Yeah. That T with that subscript number you you taught us the last time, like, I thought like I've already understand the stuff. When I go there, like, I repeated <laughs> the mistake over and over until like I just say, okay, let me go and look the video, the lecture. Yeah. So I yeah, get so it. When um Michelle said, please don't forget. A small, small case C, yes. I mean, a small case T, right? Yes. Yeah, so, that helps. Uh, so, so this here is a P with a subscript. They, I mean, it's really, those are subscripts, yeah. P, subscript C, because they're they're trying to show what they are. So just like this is subscript one and subscript two. Yes. So really, this really C is, we, is we, technically we, a subscript. Really, we are uh, like, I'm flowing with like the teaching, I'm understanding the stuff. Yep. Um, I hope like when I'm going to answering those questions, like I flow the same way now. Yeah. So it the, the the C here just means combined. It's like they just needed to have something to call because this is the probability of M. You know, this is the M proportion. This is the you know female proportion. But um, you know, so I need to have a combined proportion for those. So uh, when you, we're going to see when you do it in the calculator. It doesn't care about any like it, you're going to go to stat. Your one purport, your two proportion Z test. And it asks you, well, what are the um, what are the pieces? Well, I had males. And females, so make sure you're putting them in in the order they're asking. We have our males first. So we have. 24. Over six and 66, and we have eight and 25. And then our alternative is that the first one is greater than the second one. And when we hit calculate, it does all that other stuff for us. It finds the combined purport, it finds the combi combined um, probability, you know, proportion. Which we didn't do. I didn't turn this into a decimal because, like, it's ugly. Why? Why would I want to do? Why would I want to type this number in over and over again? It makes no sense, you know. Um, this is so I have my my z score, 
I have my p value, and then I have my this is the probability of the first one, the probability of the second one, and the combined probability here. So notice there's a whole bunch of p's in this. So you just need to make sure you keep them straight. This p hat is really the um, p c in this case, the combined the combined proportion, and then they give you the information that you put in. So when we do the rest of it, it's just going to come in and go, oh, all right, well, what was the, the, the t, what was the score? Well, here's the score. What was the p-value right here? And then what are you going to do with it? Um, why do we have this? Which one are we doing? Because it's greater than, it's only that one. Uh, we're going to not reject because of the fact that this is bigger than our alpha. So doing the work afterwards is, is simple. It's like if I was to do this by hand, it would take forever. I mean, there's yes. function, there's you know, there's all this stuff that they you could do by hand. You just don't because it it's the the math is just way too takes way too long. You know, it, it's all these little pieces that you have to put in. Like even this. And uh, is, I want to ask one a question again. It's completely How relevant. Also, find the, the critical value of z. In, okay. So uh, like. Um, just let the calculator do it because there's a function that you would have to like to calculate this. So if I wanted to do this, um, Um, formula. So here's the formula right here. So that, that's how you would do it by hand. Yeah. Is there an, any way to, to do it with it? The calculator? Yeah, that, that it does. It does it automatically with the calculator. The calculator tells you here's the z score right here. <laughs> That's the critical value. So it's th th this function here is done automatically by the calculator instantly. It does all this okay. stuff in 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 fractions of a second. Like um from Test on the past homework, homework eight. Yeah. Um, like a question, I, I I read a question there asking for like, we are gonna use a critical value. Right. Because right. So I got a formula. Value, yeah. The critical value is going to be given to you. Like it's the z score is the critical value. That's that's what this is. The the, the test statistic is the critical value. They're just interchangeable words for, like, they're 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 just the words that they use. Like, they'll pass them back and forth. They'll they'll use one and then they'll use the other. They 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 mean the exact same thing. All right. So, it's always gonna if it's a Z test, it's gonna be the next one next to Z. If it's a T test, it's gonna be the one next to T. So that's all it is. It, that's the critical value. Okay. Okay, so what it's doing, it, it's taking that thing and saying, okay, this is the value I've calculated. And then technically they compare it to another value for the alpha. They find the, the value for that and they compare those two and see, is it bigger? So like in the graphs, when they show them, they're technically finding there's a critical value here where I would reject. And if, since my value is over here and the critical value for that is over here, I'm not rejecting. If it was, if my critical value is here and my test statistic is over here, then I am rejecting. It's kind of this. That's how the p-value works. The p-value and the and the critical values work hand in hand. Um, 
we sometimes look at one, but it's just easier to do the p-value because it gives us that information instantly. So we can just compare a p-value to whatever our alpha is and then make our decision. So it's just easier to do to do that than it is to worry about the critical values and the test statistics. Okay. So in reality, all of that stuff is like the test statistic is, is kind of meaning it, it will get a footnote in a, in a paper. <laughs> you know the what will, what will be in the paper is this is what we decided you know here's the information that we have you know we are not rejecting this no, this um uh no hypothesis so theoretically uh these men and women both like uh, both like or dislike shopping for electronics equally that that's what we've determined um that that's our outcome that's what our paper says you know and then in our footnotes is here's how we did, came up with this information. And so here's our, here was our P value. We compared it to alpha of this and uh, from the, from the numbers that we calculated from that we get generated in our survey. But it's just, this is the important part. What are we doing with it? You know, um, the other stuff is how did we get it? And we let the calculator do all the math. So we don't have to know how to do the math anymore. <laughs> that's that's the nice part, is that the math get the math gets to go away. Hey Will. Oh, somebody's got a question. Uh, that was me. I left, but I'm back. Oh, okay. I didn't know who that was. Huh? Well, I'm glad you're back. Um, so those were the, the, the three how to do them, basically. Um, there's not, like I said, you know, you get to each do one, you're on uh, a couple of them on your own. Um, the video is there. Remember, the test is not, test two is not due until Thursday. Uh, so if you're working on it, I know Michelle was working on it already. Um, and you know, I just because she asked me a question. That's the only reason I I looked. Just I was looking. Somebody asked me to uh, change their test grade because they hadn't they'd forgotten to submit test one. So I did that and I just looked and I saw Michelle's was done because I was comparing her grade from this one to the first one and you did much better. So good job on that. You're doing much even though you're not finished yet. You're still doing much better than you did on the first one. So yay. Thank you. I, I my video is not working, but I'm giving you a thumbs up. Um, and um, I think that's it. Uh, if there's any questions. I just want to make sure I've covered everything. If not, have a great 4th of July. Um, remember, we are off all of next week. Um, I think there's stuff due. Like not due next week, but like there's things due afterwards. So um, so when we get back, we are going to do work on chapter 12. Yeah, I think you you give me an extended time for my test, which was due on the 30th. I, oh, well, I moved everybody's test to Thursday. Um, no, like um, I'm trying to say my last, my first test, Oh, okay. Uh, well, no, it wasn't you. It was somebody else. But yes, I did. I did give you an extension too. But yeah, he he uh, uh, he's not here. He doesn't come to uh, Tegan. Uh, he'd forgotten to um, submit it, so I, I gave him like till the end of that night to submit it, um, and he did. So and he's like, oh, I, I haven't I haven't changed my you haven't changed my grade, so I went and changed. So, so even me, I've already completed my test. Yes, so I will make sure that I go in and uh, change your grade if I haven't. Um, yeah. So I will take care of that uh, probably yeah. as soon as I leave, as soon as I turn this off. I will go check the grade and uh, make sure that it's right. Um, and I gave everybody two tenths of a point more because I had two people who had 24.8, so I just moved them up to 25 and then gave everybody else, you know, the the tiny bump. I'm like well. It's not a lot. It's, I don't think it's that? a test either. Um, professor, I don't think it's a test yeah. either. I think you give me an extended time 
on homework. And on, yeah, homework. It's not a test. Yeah, I haven't gone in and changed. I looked at the grades on the homework. I'll probably as soon as test due is done. So when I get back from vacation from you know Fourth of July, I'll go in and probably like that Monday or Tuesday, I will go in and up do up do everybody's grades from the test as well as homework. So. Um, if you're missing something and you want to have an extension, let me know now so I can do it. Um, cause I'm not going to be checking home my email while, uh, during the 4th of July break, cause I'm going to be elsewhere. Um, so if you do know you need something, let me know now so I can, um, make that extension for you. I think, um, um will you please give me an extension for the second test? Like, um, well, it's not even due until Thursday. You have all Thursday to... Uh, like, because, like, you know, we have another homework to submit, like, tomorrow. Um, we are here. Yeah, so you're finishing Chapter 9 tomorrow. Uh, yeah. But the test is on 6, 7, and 8. So you should have finished 8 yesterday. So you have a couple of days. And, and so instead of coming here... You can actually work on the test, you know, because I think the, you're the, usually here on Thursdays. The so, test is what? The test Wednesday. is due on Thursday. Thursday. That Thursday, the Thursday um, after tomorrow, you mean? Yes. Okay. The 30th. I mean, I, I, here, I'm just going to, I'm just going to move it to the second. I don't know. Yeah, because it's so uh, What the heck? Yeah. Michelle, you don't have a problem with that, do you? No, I'm okay. I just had a question about my grade. So you don't you don't you don't mind if I move it from from Thursday to Saturday, right? Yep. Yep. I'm not gonna change it on here, but the three of you know. It's not due until Thursday now. Uh yes. Yeah, so what's your question on your grade? Is it Okay, so I know you said that you didn't put in like the homework and stuff, but when I calculated like the numbers that's on there. Um, oh well, they're weighted, so you have they're not all the same. They're not all worth the same amount of stuff. Right, but so so like um, the total grade and the weighted grade, those are not the same. No, so okay. the total grade is just adds up the points, um, but the weighted grade. Here, let me go all the way. Um, like I don't. I just want to show. So the weighted grade, it takes different pieces. So tests are worth 30%. Um, the discussions are worth 15%. Uh, the final, which we don't deal with. So that's 20%, but like it gets ignored. Homework is worth 20%. Um, classwork is worth 15%. That's just being here. So I usually just give people hundreds on that. Um, so that'll go in and uh, affect your grade. So proportionately. So you kind of have, you can't just go, oh, I'm going to cut this up and divide it by pieces. It doesn't really, like, so the points are completely, uh, like, the total points are never helpful. Um, so just ignore that column. I just, you know. Okay. So just around. go okay. by the letter grade that's on there. Right. Yes. Okay. So, okay. so, so, um, so like, it means, like, you will not determine your final grade until the end of the, of everything. Yeah, exactly. So if you're like, oh, gee, I, um, here, let me. So yeah, the total points are, don't come up into the weighted grade at all. Um, I'm just gonna put hundreds here. Wow. Just because I'm not making it. Oops. Hundred. Let's make it. Oops. Well, that went up a little bit. <laughs> so, um, um, Professor? Yes. Um, like the first class, the first meeting, um, I've not yet to register at that time. So, like, I don't know how you will assess me for that. For the first time. Oh, I just don't worry about it. Um, like I said, I, even even students who aren't uh, doing any work got 100% because I'm not counting it as a, a as requirement. 
but it's still in there as part of the weight. So I just like, just give them a hundred and not like, I'm not, you know, like, cause usually like that was really for when I had in classes, uh, in class sections, like I would take attendance, but um, because it's summer and it's online and this is like, this is recommended, but not required. Um, I don't worry about it. And so I'm not going to, you know, count you absent or not absent or any of that stuff. So um, I'm just going to give you a hundreds, even, even if you have not done a single thing, because I have students who have yet to sign up for WebAssign. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I mean, we're halfway through the class and uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're not going to, to, to pass anything. Um, but I'm, I'll give them credit for, you know, classwork, whatever. Yeah, that's just because realistically, we have one thing that we do in class. Um, and um, it's hard to do because it's a group project. It's a project where I usually have people counting, you know, some kind of cereal or starbursts or M&Ms or something. And I can't just have you guys count that stuff and, and then take counts of it. So um, I'll use previous work to show you how it's how those happen um, and not do it. But that's like the classwork that I, that would be uh, one of the things that's in there. So um, like you'll get an A for that. You know, I'm just gonna give. I'm, I, if you're here, I'm gonna show you, give you an A. If you're not here, I'm still gonna give you an A because, well, you know, I like they can watch it. I don't know if they watch it in video. I don't have that access, so I just assume that they did. Oh, so student student that have already um that are far behind. Is there any way to help them? What was that tell you? Student that are far behind. Students that are yes. far behind. I have students who are far behind, them? yes. Like, I mean, if a student said, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to do um, uh, homework and web assign, can I sign up for it? You know, and there it's, it's we're into week eight and they sign up for it. I'm not going to give them extensions for any of the stuff <laughs> from week one to week eight, but I'll let them do from there on, I suppose. Um, they're not going to pass because there's two tests that they've missed. There's, you know, uh, there's like, uh, I don't know, 10 chapters, you know, that of homework that they haven't done, you know, but <laughs> I mean, I suppose I could be nice and give them a, a week or two for it to make it up. But, you know, it's only a, um, a short class yeah. anyway, so. Summer class is too fast, really. Well, that's it. It's only, you know, eight weeks, I guess, or 10 weeks to have here. But there's a week that we're off, you know, um, so. So there is no class Thursday, right? There is no class on Thursday. Okay. And, See, and no the class. test will do on Saturday, right? The, the test, right. I just moved the test to Saturday, but I'm not changing it on the calendar, so. All right. All right. Thank the, you. The only, three, the only three people who know are you three people. <laughs> right. And others will know when they listen to the video. We should get bonuses because right. I can my grade could definitely use it use it. Yeah. Um Michelle, did if you would like, I can give you an extension on test one that you can retry some of the stuff. Yes, but some of them I use my three. Uh, oh, all right. Well yeah. If you haven't, then you can at least do some of the ones over. I'll, I'll give you that, all right? Okay. All right. I'm trying. Um, you are. Thank you. You are really trying. Well, I know, because like, I mean, I think you like, so I know you're trying. So I, that's why I don't want to, you know. Uh, you know um, when when I started person. taking these classes, Michelle was the first to help me. Yeah. So, yeah. Grant extension. Uh, I'll give you to Saturday for that too. So. Um, Thank you. And Hello, Michelle. Hello. You know what? I'll give you one more submission on each one of them. So if you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So, so you should be good. Will, do yes. you need anything? Um, I mean, you're the three who come every week, all the time. So I don't have a problem helping you, like giving you guys extra stuff. But you know, like, yeah, thank you. Like I know you're here, and I know you're like, I know. 
I want you guys to I, have. I don't I don't even I don't even know uh, like my first my, my in fact my, my last test score. I don't even know oh, my score again. I know yeah. one thing that that can help my grade. I think I missed oh I, hold on. I think I missed one week of homework. I was sick and I never I think it was chapter hold on. Let me look. <laughs> One of them was I got a zero. I didn't do. Yeah, it was chapter three. I can go back okay. and that can help my score. That will help you. It's amazing how like you know. Um, Michelle Moreau. Yes. Oh, Thank wait, you. Awesome. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, oh, really? <laughs> really, Michelle? Maybe. Yep. Chapter three. All right. I wish you success. Thank you. All right, I'll, I'll give you that for the, the this the Saturday too. So, so you got plenty of stuff to do. Yes. Um. By the end of the week. Yes. All right. Thank that you. Should, you're very welcome. All right. Thank you. You guys well, have a good night. You have a great night. Okay. Thank you. Will, so you have a great uh, Fourth of July, everybody. Go uh, get some fireworks Thanks. and stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. All right.